Carb cycling for hypertrophy. Uh, it, the carb cycling for hypertrophy and fat loss are really two completely different things. They're almost two entirely different diets. I mean, you're still pulling calories up and down, but um, the the macronutrient structure is different. The how how your the purpose of the high days is completely different. Um, I want to go into detail on it a little bit and talk about it. Um, um, hopefully, this will give you a better understanding of how it works, what the differences are. Um, but we'll we'll get into it here. So first things first, um, you need to understand how the macros are applied to carb cycling for size, um, and get a feel for how the macros work in the diet. So course we have the three macros protein fats and carbs your body can utilize all three as fuel um for some reason i don't people people seem to be under this misunderstanding that protein can't be used for fuel i i don't know where that comes from but i've heard a lot of people say that but that that's absolutely untrue um so with carb cycling for hypertrophy we want to prioritize carbs as the fuel source Carbs are the body's preferred fuel source. I know you keto assholes out there, you're not going to like to hear that, but it is the ideal fuel source for your body to run on. You feel the best when you're eating carbs. That's why you crave carbs. That's why your body wants carbs. Your body runs optimally when it has carbs. Um, so, and especially when we're strength training, carbs are what your muscles use for fuel if you want to maximize your strength training get the most out of it you got to have carbs you got to have full glycogen s stores in the muscles which is store carbohydrates to get the most out of your strength training otherwise you're not um and it's just just as simple as that i you can want it wish it want something different but it's just not true um so to to grow you know with that in mind to grow we want to optimize the nutritional environment to maximize um, hypertrophy, right? You know, so if carbs are what are the the preferred fuel source for the muscle, you should be eating carbs, correct? Um, however, you you know, keep this in mind. I'm not saying that carbs are essential to survival. Uh, in fact, they are the only macronutrient um, that you don't need to survive. You will die after a period of time if you don't eat proteins or fats. Uh, you will not die if you um, are eating protein, fats, and not carbs. Carbs, carbs are not necessary for survival. They are necessary if you want to optimize hypertrophy and be the best bodybuilder you can be. Um, so we need to understand, you know, with with that in mind, we need to understand the macros role in the diet i'm going to go into detail on each one so protein protein is first and foremost your body prefers to use it to repair and build t tissue and maintain immune function assist with nutrient absorption um, secondarily it can be used as a fuel source through a process called gluconeogenesis where it starts breaking down um, uh, proteins for and to, to convert them into glucose. Um, that's not what we want. We want those proteins to be preserved for pro muscle protein synthesis, muscle growth, hypertrophy. Um, you know, so we want to minimize protein being used as fuel. And the best source of of the best way to do that, the best source of food to prevent that is um, carbs. Carbs raise um, insulin levels. Insulin is protein sparing. Okay, um, eating more car eating more carbs is pro protein sparing in itself. Um, another thing about protein, another big misconception, and this goes back to the early 2000s. I was guilty of this one. Uh, in late 90s, early 2000s, people used to think you needed to eat like 600, 700 grams of protein um, for muscle growth. The more protein you ate, the more muscle growth you're not. That's just not true. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit more later. I'll, I'll break down the math for you and, and go into some detail about that. But if you're eating more carbs, you don't even need as much protein since carbs are protein sparing. 
Uh, complete amino acid chains are necessary to build muscle. This is another thing. Uh, I'm sorry, vegans. The only source of protein that has a complete amino acid chain is animal protein. It's just the facts. Uh, now, now, that's not to say you can't get all of the amino acids needed for muscle growth through vegetable sources, but you have to stack and mix different vegetable sources to do it, and it, there's, it's not optimal. Um, this diet is about optimal optimizing uh, muscle growth, and you know we're not looking at you know health or whatever. It's optimizing muscle growth. Um, fat. Uh, fats are used for fats. Kind of a the utility uh, tool in in dietary macros. It can be used for a ton of different things. It can use for stored energy, otherwise known as fat. <laughs> Your belly fat. Um, insulate the body, protect organs, uh, helping protein works, uh, start chemical reactions, uh, immune function, hor hormone, um, you know, produ uh, manufacturing hormones, uh, maintaining aspects of basic metabolism, and absorbing fat-soluble vitamins. It, it is there. Now, the thing is with fats, you don't need that many of them to accomplish these things, um, but you do need them, and the average American greatly overconsumes fats. Um, in you know, I saw an interesting study recently where they showed that people are eating less carbohydrates now than they were 20 years ago, but they're fatter than they ever were. But if you looked at the chart, they're eating less carbs, but they're eating a lot more fat. I think that has to do with people, um, more people doing keto diets, or um, you know, a lot of foods are that that say keto friendly and people end up eating them and they just have a lot more fat in them. Um, um, so you know, I, when we're burning fat or when we're when we're trying to diet for a show, we we do want to burn fat. You know, we want to use fat as the primary fuel source. Uh, when we're trying to put on size, we do not. Um, fat, you know, as we have established, isn't an optimal fuel source for hypertrophy and weight training. Carbs. Carbs are strictly used by the body as fuel. They have no other purpose in the body other than to be used as fuel. There are no, I mistyped here, there are no essential carbs. Okay, there are essential fatty acids, there are essential amino acids. There are no essential carbs. Um, although it is the body's preferred fuel source, it runs best on carbs. All carbs are essentially converted into glucose in the bloodstream. Glucose is absorbed into the cells where it's used as energy. Um, insulin sends the message to the cell to accept the glucose. Not enough. If you don't have enough insulin, um, uh, insulin uh, in the blood, the carbs can't be used or can't be absorbed by the cell. Um, if the uh, if you're insulin resistant, your cells are insulin resistant and will not accept the insulin. Carbs will not be accepted into the cells either. So we need to optimize insulin production. We need to optimize insulin sensitivity to be able to use, utilize those carbs effectively. Uh, the body stores unused carbs in three different places. Muscle glycogen, which is what we want. We want the muscles to be full and big, um, round, pumped. Um, liver glycogen is another place, uh, um, you know, you have limited stores. Muscle glycogen, the body can store, a large bodybuilder can start, store 1,000 to 1,500 grams of carbs as muscle glycogen, a, a crazy amount. Liver glycogen, I think it's something like 60 or 70. It's pretty small. And then fat. Carbs can be converted into fat. Um, you know, as we mentioned, carbs are the optimal fuel source for weight training. Uh, um, high carbs in high insulin state in the body, when, when you're in a high insulin state, it makes the cells not only receptive to pulling in uh, carbohydrates, but pulling in other, other nutrients such as amino acids. And uh, if we have increased amino acid uptake, we have increased protein synthesis, muscle protein synthesis and muscle growth. Uh, so this is another question, you know, what? you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, the whole myth of eating a shit ton of, the bro myth of eating a shit ton of protein, 
shouldn't I eat a lot of protein if I want to get big? Muscles are made out of muscle, so maybe I should eat more muscles to get big muscles. Um, you know, you should eat just enough to get the job done and maybe a little extra just to cover the basis, okay? You, you know, eating twice as much as you need is not going to cost twice as much muscle growth. We've established that now. Most bodybuilders nowadays aren't eating shit tons of protein um, that they were back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and dudes are just as big as they ever were. Um, I don't know if any of you know who Patrick Tour is. He trains a lot of the top bodybuilders now, Ian Vieri, um, James Hollingshead. His guys are the biggest, fullest guys on the stage, and he does high-carb, low-protein diets. Um Studies have pretty, pretty, pretty well established that 0.75 grams per pound of body weight is really all it's needed to recover from weight training. Okay. Now let's say you're enhanced. Um, you're training really hard. You're probably going to need a little bit more than that. They're studying natural athletes. Uh, uh, we, we, we know that anabolic steroids increase protein synthesis and therefore you could probably utilize more of that protein for muscle growth. Um, so let's play it safe and we'll consume between one and 1.25. If you want to be really aggressive, you can go up to one and a half grams per pound, which is probably unnecessary, but I'd say one to 1.25 is plenty. Um, you know, so let's break down the math on it so you can get a full grasp of, 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 how little protein you actually need to grow muscle. It, let's let's assume that you were a freak of nature and gained 20 pounds a year. Like big Rami. 20 pounds of muscle is 9,071 grams. Okay? 9,071 grams divided by 365 days is 24.85 grams per day. That's only 25 grams of protein synthesis per day. Assuming that all of that muscle is protein, which it's not, there's going to be some <laughs> other things in there, you know, glycogen, etc. Um, so, considering that, why do you need so much protein? You, 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 what, what's happening to the rest of that protein, the 500 grams? You're just shitting it out, <laughs> turning it into fat, whatever. Uh, uh, um, it, your body's just not using it. Um, high carb days are used to leverage insulin to create growth, okay? Um, you know, when, when insulin binds to the receptor, it, it increases amino acid uh, uptake. So, and we have weight training that stimulates protein synthesis to pull that protein into the muscle cell. So, as long as we're doing all of that, we need a minimal amount of protein to, to, to grow, okay? 1.25 grams is still a lot, you know, for, for a guy my size, it's 300 grams of protein a day. Um, applying the macros to the diet, you know, so you, carbs. Carbs are higher on lifting days since they are optimal for uh, fueling muscle and it keeps insulin levels high, which we've established um, improves amino acid uptake. Um, lower on non-workout days on your if you're sitting around on your ass watching TV playing video games all day you really don't need that many carbs you know and that, that those excess carbs are probably going to be stored as fat anyway and we want to minimize fat storage fats fats are kept moderately low since carbs are high you really don't need that many fats to to do all the essential fu functions in the body. Uh, I think, I don't, you know, please don't quote me on this, but I, I, I read somewhere that you really only need like something like 20 or 30 grams of essential fatty acids per day to do everything the body needs to do. It may be more than that. I don't know. I'm just pulling that number straight out of my ass, but I, I recall seeing that. Um, so you, so in, what you want to do here is you want to eat enough essential fats to keep you healthy and maintain essential body functions no more okay any fats that you eat in excess in a high carbohydrate state are, are just going to get stored as fat anyway so there's no point in having a ton of fats just what you need uh protein um eat enough to feed the muscle uh, and fuel protein synthesis and just a little extra in case as we discussed um it should be from whole animal food sources and spread out evenly through the day so we have level amino acid levels in, in the 
blood. We established that animal protein is the only one with complete amino acids, so we need to stick with animal proteins. You want your meals spaced every two to three hours apart to maintain consistent amino acid levels in five to six meals per day, ideally. Um, you know, I found anything further than three hours apart, you really can't even fit the meals in, um, you know, between waking hours. Uh, so two to three hours is ideal. If I, you can't really go less than two hours because you just don't have the food digested by then. Um, you know, so I, three hours, two and a half, three hours seems to be the sweet spot for me. I, I time my meals usually two and a half hours apart. That, that seems to work pretty well. As long as you're eating things that are easy to digest. If you're eating a lot more fiber, um, you know, dense foods, you may need a little more time between meals. But if you're eating chicken and rice, your body processes it pretty quickly. Uh, carb cycling for hypertrophy, how the diet is constructed, okay? Low days are going to be your off days from the gym when you're not working out and you don't need a lot of fuel. Uh, these days tend to be slightly hypocaloric. Um, you're running in a bit of a deficit that day, maybe even burning a little bit of fat. Um, carbs are kept lower. Fats might be slightly higher that day since carbs are are lower. We can refuel on, on our fats if we need to. Um, moderate amount of protein on that day. We're, we're at the 1.25, let's say we're at the 1.25 grams per pound. Um, Medium days should be isocaloric, moderate carbs, moderate fats, moderate protein. And when I say moderate carbs, it's, you know, on this diet, it's a fair amount. I think I'm eating somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 grams of carbs on my, on my medium days. You know, so that may not be moderate to some people. For In my world, that is moderate. Uh, protein is, is up, uh, up, you know, Maybe not quite as high as the low days. Sometimes the low days will be a tad higher. Sometimes not. Uh, but it's in that one and a quarter gram per pound uh, range. High days. Uh, you want your high days to be on um, uh, training days. Okay. And more specifically, you probably want it on days where you're um, doing your hardest training. Leg days, back days. Um, so you're putting those calories to use or, or weak body parts. Um, typically we're going to start off with two days per week that are high days. Um, and you know, if your metabolism can handle it without putting on excess body fat, work towards three days. Um, on these days, you want your fats to be as close to zero as possible. Um, when you're in that high carb, high insulin state, any excess fat you eat are just going to get stored as fat. Um, so we want to keep fats as low as possible. Lower protein on these days. You can go down to as low as the 0 0.75, 0 0.8 grams per pound. I, I think I'm like around one gram per pound of body, uh, per body uh, weight on those days. But that, that's plenty. Um, you know, we've established that carbs and insulin are protein sparing, so you don't need the excess carbs. Uh, really high carbs on these days. The, the carbs are going to be pretty high. I, my, mine is, I think, somewhere in the 900 range is what I'm eating on these days. Uh, you just have to kind of feel your metabolism out. You want to eat as much as you can without adding tons of body fat, okay? You want to push it up to that push it up to that line, but not over it. Um, high carb days, de a little more detail on the high carb days. Um, when we're cutting in a fat loss phase, I know some people hate the term cutting. What the fuck ever. Um, it's semantics. Um, but when you're when you're dieting, the purpose of the high carb day is completely different. Uh, the purpose is to refill glycogen and stimulate the metabolism and just give you a mental break from the from the diet and being low carb and, and feeling like shit. For hypertrophy, the high carb day is to stimulate additional protein synthesis from the food to maximize growth. Okay, completely different purpose. Your glycogen's not going to be fully depleted by the time you get to the to the high day when you're in a hypertrophy phase. It probably is going to be when you're on a diet cutting phase. Um, another thing about the high days, you never want to run the high days back to back. They should never be on consecutive days. Um, 
it, if you do some of those calories, your 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 glycogen is going to be completely topped off. So any of those excess calories are going to be that you don't burn in your workout or aren't used for refueling glycogen are going to just be stored as fat. So doing, running back to back high days is probably just going to make you fat. It's not going to really add much as far as muscle goes. So we want to minimize fat gain. Um, you, you just won't be depleted enough. Um, and also, it, you, we want to be mindful of insulin sensitivity. If you're pounding high carbs all the time, your insulin sensitivity is going to go to shit. And we're also going to put a lot of stress on the pancreas to keep up uh, with insulin production as well. Um, you know, you, you can end up wearing your pancreas out and becoming a fucking diabetic. So we want to maximize insulin sensitivity, maintain um, endogenous uh, insulin production where possible. So that brings us to this. Uh, supplementing ex exogenous uh, insulin in metformin. As you get older, you use growth hormone. You've been doing this for a while. Your insulin sensitivity and insulin production are going to decline. It's just, you know, some people it's different than others. Um, I, my body can't keep up on its own. I just know that, you know, I'm, I'm it's everybody in my family's fucking diabetic once they get past 45. Um, what to keep in mind about insulin, people think there's some magic to insulin. Insulin isn't directly anabolic. It's indirectly anabolic, you know, through insulin is just a storage hormone. It tells the body to uptake nutrients or cells. Uh, this includes carbohydrates, blood glucose, and amino acids. So indirectly, when we're pushing more aminos into the muscle cell, we're helping hypertrophy and, and um, anabolism. Okay, so that's why it's indirectly anabolic. Um, you know, we talked about it before a little bit, but when, when do your blood sugars run high? When your body isn't making enough insulin or your insulin sensitivity is shot to hell, that's when your blood sugars run high. So it's important to keep track of your blood sugar. I know a lot of bodybuilders don't do that, but you have got to track your blood sugar. Um, I would recommend to anybody who's eating a high carb diet or doing bodybuilding that you keep track of your, your blood glucose levels. You can get a meter at, at Walmart for fucking $20 with some strips. Um, and you just prick your finger. Don't be a fucking pussy about pricking your finger. Just do it in the morning. When you get up, see where you're at a couple times a week. And if you see those numbers creeping up, you know you need to do something about it. Either you need to go on a diet and lose some body fat, which will increase insulin sensitivity, or you need to supplement with something, you know, insulin, metformin, berberine. Um, you need to address the issue. Eat less carbs. That will do it too. So when to use insulin? Blood sugar uh, dictates insulin and metformin use in my opinion okay not the other way around okay uh, people 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 will just slam insulin and have no no plan or whatever for their diet and they adjust their diet to the insulin use it should be the other way around your insulin if you're going to use insulin your insulin should be to facilitate your diet that's it um you know, blood sugar dictate, dictates the insulin and metformin use. So start with metformin first. Find out if it's an insulin sensitivity issue. Uh, if it's an insulin sensitivity, sensitivity issue and you see your fasting blood sugar levels come back down when you use metformin, you know what the problem is. It's insulin sensitivity, not insulin production. Um, and metformin has some benefits for longevity too. You know, I'm not really going to get into much of that, but you know, new studies are showing that it, it reduces cancer risk and, you know, having better insulin sensitivity is better for longevity as well. Um, so you may want to just use it as a longevity enhancer as well. Um, if the metformin doesn't help, it may be that your body's just not making enough insulin. It, 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 the insulin production, its natural insulin production isn't enough to keep up with with the carbs that you're eating and you may need to supplement um, with exogenous ins insulin. So um, if your blood sugars, your fasting blood sugars creep more than 100 in the morning, if you're more than 130 pre-meal, you know, if it's, you're, you're going, you're three hours between meals and you check it pre-meal and it's one third uh, above 130, 
something's going on, okay, and it needs to be addressed. Um, when you do use insulin, I would start with something fast acting like human log. Start off with just the high days, uh, use five units or less, um, and see what that does to your blood, blood glucose levels. Use it every other meal, and then adjust up only when necessary. You know, you don't want your glucose levels getting below 70. And so ideally, they should be somewhere between 70 and 100 uh, pre-meal. Um, remember, too, if you're if you're eating like shit and not following the diet, eating a high-fat diet, and you're taking insulin with that, it's just going to make you fatter. That's why people get fat when they take insulin. <laughs> or they're just eating too much. They're eating too many carbs. Um, you know, if, if you've filled up your glycogen store, where do you think that those excess calories are going to go? They're going to go to your fucking hips, your love handles, your ass. Your belly, you, you, there's only there's only so, there's only so many carbs you can fit into your glycogen stores. Um, everybody asks me about the cheat meal. You know how does the cheat meal work? How does the cheat meal work? Uh, people are, are fucking obsessed with the cheat meal. Jesus fucking Christ, give the cheat meal a break. God Almighty, um, <laughs> you know if you must have a cheat meal, it should only be on the sixth day. I try to keep it cleaner if possible. You know, start with protein, carbs, maybe something that's a little higher fat than you normally eat. You know, a good example would be like I'll go to the steakhouse and grab a steak and a plain potato and some vegetables. You know, that steak might have a little bit of fat in it, more fat in it than I normally would eat. Um, you know, I, I they I know they put fucking oil and butter on the vegetables at the steakhouse. Mediterranean food, one of my favorite go tos is to grab kebabs. After after a workout on a high day, uh, sushi is another good option as long as you're not getting like the fatty fried stuff, or or the <laughs> the fucking shit that has like sauce and stuff all over it. Stick to the regular rolls. That's just just fish and vegetables, and rice. Um, burger and fries, you know, is a higher fat option, but you're still eating essentially meat and potatoes. Uh, you know, if, if you need to tickle that urge to have a higher fat cheat meal. Uh, really, you should avoid, I, I just don't think they have any place in a bodybuilding diet. You should avoid high fat, high carb, low protein foods, donuts, ice cream, pizza, pastries, high fat candy, like candy bars, <laughs> bread and pasta. Yeah, sorry about that. That's my daughter cackling back here. Um, and if you must do a dessert, do it after a cleanish cheat meal, you know, so that way you're not pounding it. Believe me, I like my fucking cookies. Um, I went a little ape shit on the the junk food after my my contest, but you know, you you can only get away with it for so long before it makes you fat. So that food is going to do nothing for your body composition. I don't care what anybody says that you need a muffin, donuts, cookies, ice cream, whatever. It's going to do zero to enhance your body composition. Optimal is the optimal thing is just not to have the cheat meal. Period. Um, you know, I, when I'm dieting for a show, I I, I just don't do it at all. I, I, on a rare occasion, um, or you could cheat without cheating. You know, I, make make your own cheat meal. Uh, you you can you can make burger and fries at home. You know, get get fries and put them in the air fryer and get. 96% lean ground beef and make your burgers and you have a pretty there's really not a lot of fat in there it, that's a pretty pretty clean meal and it still feels like you're cheating you know that's that's another option uh, but the better you eat the better your results are going to be you don't need cheat meals there is no physiological reason to have a cheat meal there is psychological reasons to have it if you want to keep your your significant other happy, you know, a date night, going out and eating whatever is, is, is fine. Having dinner with your family. I'm not saying be the douchebag that shows up to Thanksgiving dinner with your your uh, your Tupperware full of fucking chicken and rice while everybody else is eating the turkey and potatoes. Just have some turkey and potatoes for the love of God. One, one meal is not going to kill you, but... Uh, these motherfuckers that want to eat cheat meals every goddamn day, you're always going to be fat. You're never going to get in shape. So that's just the truth of it. 
All right, thank you for watching my video. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, please like and subscribe. I've got tons of people watching my videos. Nobody's subscribing. I'm begging you, please subscribe. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the comment section. Uh, if there are other videos you'd like me to make, let me know. I'm open to suggestions. And follow me on Instagram at Paul K. Barnett. Thanks.